fun. Welcome back to Shop Talk. I'm Lexi Schultz. We're talking about gum diseases. Still with us is Dr. Regina Santos Morales. She's a periodontist at the Asian Center for Periodontics and Implant Dentistry. Okay, Doc, a while ago we were talking about all of the disgusting diseases that you can get in there and how people really don't pay attention a lot of times to their gums and the bones within the gums because it's really more about the teeth. Yes. And when they see maybe a cavity, it's a little more alarming for them, whereas they don't see that they feel it more, and it's more the aesthetic yes. of it, as yes. opposed to the gums, oh, they just put it aside. Yes, that's right. So we've talked about gingivitis and periodontitis, among mm -hmm. other things. How do we treat these diseases? Um, for gingivitis particularly, we have a non-surgical way of treating it. We don't, would normally do scaling and root planing with that. Um, basically, it's a deeper kind of cleaning. Okay. Um, uh, just like the space that we talked about earlier, the space between the teeth and the gums, um, that's where our instruments enter and clean that space for you so that you will go back to health. So gingivitis is still a good stage because it's still a reversible stage. Treatable, not But surgery. when you go to, um, to periodontitis, then that really becomes... Why did your eyes stage. light up? It's like, oh, a bigger problem. <laughs> because it is a bigger problem. <laughs> yes. here, here we are, you have an option of non-surgical and mm -hmm. surgical. Now, the, the, the reason why we go for, um, for, for treatment of this is to remove all those deposits that are found inside that space. Mm -hmm. And if it's very deep, a non-surgical treatment may not be enough or may not be sufficient to remove all of the bacteria, all of the dirt. So you end up having to go to surgical treatment, which is what people are always very afraid of. Yes. But however, the way I tell my patients is that we're actually just cleaning your teeth. I mean, we're not going to do anything to the teeth, but give your teeth some bath. After all these times, all these years, that it hasn't been cleaned very well. So now this is the time for you to clean it, and then hopefully it will go back to, to normal as far as um, loss of the bleeding, loss of the pus, loss of the abscess, loss of the bacteria. So pretty much um, they, we try to stay away from the surgical, but um, sometimes we just can't do much about it. But I'm sure with surgical, people always have trepidation. So yes. what exactly happens in a surgical procedure to um, rid someone of periodontitis? What we do there is we make a small opening or an access area for us to be able to clean. Um, it's just like maybe opening a new door for us to be able to remove all the dirt that is and found inside. Where do you do that? Um, <laughs> I'm getting nervous just in hearing about just it. Just like in the space between your teeth and the gums and then after Afterwards, you have a little bit, um, we put uh, melting sutures after so that it's going to be comfortable for you afterwards. Okay. Melting sutures. Yes, we need absorbable sutures. <laughs> no, yes, I, I'm just trying to, to absorb it also in my head because it's really no joke. And why are people so scared of the dentist? Um, why is it? Because it's a little more painful? No, um, I think it's because of the way we were brought up and okay. our instruments from way before are, weren't really that friendly. Okay. Um, but nowadays I always tell patients that our, our equipments now are much more friendlier as compared to before and um, even our drills, some of them are not completely noiseless but they're not as noisy as Is it really the noise you think that I gets think people so. worried? I, I will always tease my engineering, my friends that if they develop something that is non, um, no, no sound, mm -hmm. that they will be billionaires by now. I'm sure. It, 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 it's, it's really the sound. So in my office, we do. I provide like a, a, a noiseless um, speaker mm -hmm. on their ears. So, or earphones, so that they try to really minimize and they have TVs there. You do other remedies. Yeah, we really have to make them as comfortable as possible. Okay, so let's pit periodontitis against a root canal. <laughs> what would be more painful? Um, it's very different. Um, root canal treatment actually is is very painful only because it's the nerve that you're actually yes. treating. So okay? with periodontitis, with periodontitis we don't deal with the tooth nerve. Mm -hmm. What we deal more, as I mentioned, to is the outside structure of it. It's more of more of our pain, if you'd like to call it pain, is wound pain. It's not even, it's discomfort. Okay. Um, I always tell patients it's not like pain that like shoots up to your head yes. or gives you real continuous mm -hmm. headache. 
um, are kind of discomfort or pain, if you want to call it. It's more of a wound. If you touch it, it's painful. If you leave it there, you know it's there, just give some TLC, tender loving care, then you'll be okay. Is it also the type that you have to eat ice cream for a couple yes, of days? Yes, <laughs> that will not be bad. That will not be bad, yes. And, and they always smile. When, when I give them that post-op instructions, you, you always have the tendency of the patient smiling. So how long does it take before, because you say that a healthy gum actually is pink in yes. color, how long does it take before it happens? A few weeks. A few weeks. A few weeks. In fact, right after the procedure or a day or two, they really feel the difference already. Especially if they came in with a lot of abscesses. To treat gingivitis, let's say, first step, how and how long is it the process to, to get rid Again, of gingivitis? It, it, since gingivitis itself also has a mild, moderate, and severe awesome. um, stages on, on, a, on a sequence of, of, of treatment. And it's usually four, if you have four quadrants in the mouth. And do you just localize the anesthesia or do yes, you usually you put the patients no, to sleep? No need to put patients to sleep. But I'm sure people have asked. Yes, <laughs> yes. But no, no, no. And let's talk about, remember we were, during the break we are talking about the aesthetic treatments that you possibly have. We are oh, talking yeah. about Meg Ryan and the gums. Yes, um, one of my favorite procedures are actually when patients come into my office and complain that they have gummy smile. Um, but is that really a complaint? I mean, some people find it cute. Um, only because you don't. their teeth appear so small. And, and it's not, not about small teeth. Yes, because um, in fact that excess of gum can mm -hmm. cause gingivitis as well. Because there's more space for the bacteria yes, to breathe. Exactly. And so what, what we would normally do is expose the correct size of your teeth. And that, and, and that, and that is done by removing uh, a portion of the gum again to expose the, 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 the real size of it. And then in fact when they see it, it's like... Are those my real teeth? So it, it seems like they, they have another set of teeth. It's almost like they had a facelift. Because I'm sure people yes. would look completely different. Um, just like what I mentioned to you earlier also is that on the same visit itself, they're very happy already and they're already smiling. Only because they can see that, wow, they have real nice teeth inside and not all gums. That's true. Not all gums. Well, at least there was an upside. <laughs> not just about periodontitis. Yes. Um, the gums and teeth, obviously, it's very important to take care of them. So maybe, Dr. you can have some parting words of wisdom to our viewers on how to take care, take proper care of their um, teeth. I guess just to mention to them to visit their, their dentist regularly. And in fact, um, they can even inquire with their dentist if they do have gum disease already so that they, they, are, they, they know that they are giving attention to it. Brush, floss at least twice a day. Um, and um, um, I guess rinse if, if, if you would like to rinse. So. And what about for healthy gums? Because it, the, of course, the mouth you have to brush properly and all of that. What are the other tips to to keeping gums healthy apart from? Is there a certain food right. that you should avoid? Is there a regimen that? No, is there a secret to not really. no, no, to no, healthy no. gums? So it's really just about maintaining yes, yes. proper habits every day. Yeah, because the worst part of it is once you lose teeth, then of course you can have dental implants. But then again, if you can save what God has given you already, right. it would be best to save what you already have. Okay, well, a lot of insightful words from, from you today, Dr. Arsanas. Thank you so thank much. You. you can breathe now. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful interview. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank All right, you. so thank you for watching Shop Talk. I'm Lexi Schultz. Enjoy the rest of your day.